Hello and welcome back. I have a quick question for you. Have you seen an animated film? I'm sure you have seen at least one animated film. Well, I often get so engrossed in the characters and the stories that I have to constantly remind myself that none of it is real. You know, the flowing hair, the ripples on water, the expressiveness of the eyes, leaves fluttering in the breeze, they all look so real that it is difficult to believe that all of these are actually created from scratch on computers. But did you know that the fundamentals of animation start in geometry? That's right. In fact, most animators are mathematicians themselves. Let's talk about geometric sketching, okay, for a minute, or what we call as practical geometry. I think it's a misnomer, that is, it is wrongly used term, because if you think about it, there's nothing practical in it. If I had to bisect an angle, why wouldn't I simply use a protractor? If I had to bisect a line, couldn't I simply use a ruler? Geometric construction found its root in ancient Greece. Plato, a philosopher, challenged people to create seemingly impossible constructions using just a straight edge, which is nothing but a ruler without markings and a compass. Given the tools at our disposal today, practical geometry is more of a test of our logic and a challenge for our curious minds. So as we learn the constructions, remember to ask yourself at each step, why does it work the way it does? Because that is what we have to really learn from this chapter. So let's start with a simple construction where we bisect a given angle. Our first step is to draw an angle AOB measuring 45 degrees. We can use a protractor to do this, right? Next, using a compass and keeping the center at O, take a convenient radius and draw an arc cutting AO and BO. Let the arc cut AO at P and BO at Q. Now increase the radius on the compass a little, then keeping the center at P and using the new radius, draw an arc. With same radius and a new center at Q, draw an arc intersecting the previous arc. Let's call the point of intersection of the two arcs as R. Now join OR. The line OR will bisect angle AOB. Verify it by measuring both the angles AOR and BOR. You will see that AOR and BOR measure 22 and a half degrees each. Now we have studied congruency in triangles, right? And we know that whenever we want to prove two quantities as equal, we can prove that the triangles containing the sides or the angles are congruent. So the quantities become equal to each other by CPCT. Here, let's try to prove that OR bisects angle AOB theoretically using the congruency test for triangles. Join points P and R to get segment PR and similarly join Q and R to get QR. Now, we have two triangles ORP and ORQ. In these two triangles, we have OQ and OP are equal because they are the radii of the same circle. Similarly, QR and PR are also equal as we have taken the same radius to draw the arcs having the centers at P and R that intersect at R. And OR is a common side to both the triangles. Hence, by the side-side-side test, triangles OPR and OQR are congruent. Thus, we have proved that angles POR and QOR are equal because they are corresponding angles of congruent triangles and that was simple, wasn't it? Now, let's try to construct a perpendicular bisector of a given line segment. First, we draw a line segment AB of length 5 cm. Next, on our compass, take a radius more than half the length of AB. Then, taking A as center, draw arcs, one above and one below the segment AB. Now, keeping the radius exactly as it was in the previous step, place your compass on point B and draw two arcs such that they cut the previous arcs drawn from A. Let us label the points at which the arcs cut each other as P and Q. 
then join PQ. Let's label the point at which PQ cuts AB as M. PQ is now the perpendicular bisector of AB. How do we verify this? Simple, measure angles PMA and PMB. Both should be 90 degrees. The lengths of AM and BM should also be equal. Again, can we verify this theoretically? Yes, we can. We can do it by again using the congruency test for triangles. First, join the points AP, AQ, BP and BQ. In triangles APQ and BPQ, AP is equal to BP by our construction. Similarly, AQ and BQ are equal and PQ is common. Hence, triangles APQ and BPQ are congruent using the side 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 rule. So we can say angle APM and BPM are equal because they are corresponding angles of congruent triangles. Now let's look at triangles APM and BPM and prove their congruency. Again AP and BP are equal by our construction. PM is a common side and angles APM and BPM are equal as we just proved. So the sides AM and BM are equal by CPCT inferring that M is the midpoint of AB or PQ bisects AB. Now using the same congruency we can also infer that angles PMA and PMB are equal. If we look at them we'll see that they form a linear pair so they must add up to 180 degrees. This proves that each angle must be 90 degrees. Hence, PQ is the perpendicular bisector of AB. Wow, that was fun, wasn't it? Good. Now, you are clear on basic construction concepts for angle bisectors and perpendicular bisectors. Now, given this, it will be easy to draw a triangle when data about sides and angles of the triangle is available to us, right? Let us now try a unique and more involved construction. We draw a triangle given its base, base angle and the sum of the other two sides. Okay, so here's the problem. Construct a triangle ABC where BC measures 3.8 centimeters with angle B measuring 45 degrees and the sum of sides AB and AC equal to 6.8 centimeters. Ready? Let's start by drawing the side BC measuring 3.8 centimeters using a ruler. Next, we will simply use a protractor to draw a 45 degrees angle at B and mark an arbitrary point on this ray as X. Now we know that AB plus AC is 6.8 centimeters. So cut off the arc BA dash of 6.8 centimeters on ray BX with the center as B. Now let's pause for a minute and think of what we need to accomplish. We have to find a point A between B and A dash such that if I bend B A dash from that point, A dash should fall on C and the triangle A B C will be complete. Great. Now we know what to do. Let's now figure out how we do it. First join C A dash and then draw a perpendicular bisector of C A dash. The point where the perpendicular bisector cuts the segment B A dash is our point A. Join A C and we get our required triangle. Did you get how that worked? Since P Q is a perpendicular bisector, any point on it is equidistant from C and A dash. Hence, A A dash is equal to A C which will make AB plus AC equal to 6.8. Ingenious, isn't it? Once the solution is in front of you, we are left wondering why we didn't think of it ourselves. I know that happens. To verify, measure AB and AC to confirm that AC plus AB is equal to 6.8 centimeters. Let's go one step further and construct a triangle where we are given its base, base angle and the difference of the other two sides. So here's our challenge. Now construct a triangle ABC where AB measures 5 centimeters and angle A is 30 degrees. AC minus BC is equal to 3 centimeters. Let's start. From the problem statement, we know that AC is longer than BC. 
we start by drawing AB equals to 5 centimeters. Then measure and draw an angle BAX of 30 degrees using your protractor. Now our task is to find the point C on ray AX so that AC minus BC is 3 centimeters. Since we know that AC is greater than BC, draw arc of length 3 cm on ray AX. Label it as D and join BD. Now draw the perpendicular bisector of segment BD. Let PQ be the perpendicular bisector of BD. The point where PQ cuts ray AX is point C. We join BC and get our required triangle ABC. How do we prove this? Since PQ is the perpendicular bisector of BD, hence CD is equal to BC. Now, AD is equal to AC minus CD. Hence, AD is equal to AC minus BC. Thus, AC minus BC is equal to 3 centimeters. Wasn't that cool? Tutomate. For more amazing video lectures, Download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.